Feeling that itch to finally upgrade your rig? Shopping for the latest Z390 motherboards? Checking which board can squeeze a bit more power out of an i9-9900K? We'll be testing out MSI's MAG Z390 Tomahawk today. I'm Rick at Techspin and we've got exciting contests monthly now with our Drive to 5 giveaways. Be sure to connect with us on social media and get the latest reviews by clicking that subscribe button below and that bell icon with new content weekly. So we've been using this really amazing new Z390 motherboard to help our last several videos and it's about time we did a review of it. MSI always keeps up with the latest processors and technology and with MSI's MAG line which focuses on functionality with a rugged military style to it, their Tomahawk has been updated to handle Intel's 9th gen processors. If you're looking for a new motherboard for your next build or are just checking out their new releases, be sure to leave your favorite and why in the comments below. I might even do a review of it in the future. Big thanks to MSI for this review sample which allowed me to push my CPU to new heights. And let's get to this review right after this. Just a quick reminder, if you want to connect with us online, we're on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all at Techspin Review. And there's links below if you decide to pick up this board. You can support us here at Techspin by using our affiliate links to buy. It'll help us out here with no extra cost to you. So we've got the MSI MAG Z390 Tomahawk in the studio, and it's designed to support the latest Intel 9th and also 8th gen core processors. It goes for 159 bucks on Amazon US, 145 pounds in the UK, 210 Canadian dollars, or 4,800 NT in Taiwan. This Tomahawk has an LGA 1151 socket for compatible Intel CPU processors, and beside it, the dual-channel DDR4 RAM slots. They support 64 gigs of RAM with XMP, and the DDR4 boost function with selected modules can overclock to a pretty high 4,400 MHz. This board features the newest Z390 Controller Hub chipset for Intel, which brings the latest features, and MSI's MAG line focuses on functionality with a rugged military-style design and three-year warranty in the United States. In the box, you'll get a thick manual, quick install guide and warranty card, driver disc, two M.2 screws, two black SATA cables, an 80cm RGB LED extension cable, case badge, and product brochure. Checking out the main PCIe slot, it's equipped with steel armor for reinforcement, giving four times the strength of a normal graphics card slot, and preventing damage due to those new behemoth graphics cards. And this board does support AMD Crossfire. A nine-phase VRM design handles powering even the top-of-the-line Intel i9 chips, and has a solid heatsink mounted on top to help cool the power delivery. The dual M.2 slots can be set in RAID 0, 1, 5, or 10 with MSI's M.2 Genie software, and has Intel Optane support and there's one M.2 Frozer shield to help dissipate heat. SATA port 2 is shared with the first M.2, ports 5 and 6 are shared with the second M.2 slot. There's also a smaller slot for Intel's CNVI Wi-Fi module, an easy way to add Wi-Fi to your board. The back I.O. shield is attached for easy installation, really great to see on a mid-range board, and I hope they become standard. There's keyboard and mouse USB with legacy PS2, DisplayPort 1.2 and HDMI 1.4 ports that support 4K at 24Hz. Under the dual Intel Gigabit LAN with i219V and i211AT controllers, we have three USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-A and one Type-C, and an internal front header for USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-A. And there's gold-plated audio jacks with SPDIF out. The audio section uses the ALC892 codec for audio boost with high quality audio caps and the section is completely isolated for clean sound and the chip has EMI shielding. Along the bottom we see the plus 12 volt RGB and plus 5 volt RGB rainbow, HD audio connector, two USB 2.0 and three PWM fan headers. For overclocking you'll need two 8 pin ATX connectors for the 8 plus 4 pin ATX CPU connection, though the board booted without it and was usable at stock speeds. Below, the shield extends to one heatsink that covers the power components, which looks great. The top components have a heatsink with Arsenal Gaming, which is the A and G in MSI's MAG designation. This board also utilizes MSI's Mystic Light software, which controls the PCH RGBs, as well as the underboard highlights top right, which look amazing. Please take a moment to like this video, and if you like what you see, then please do subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when I upload new content. MSI's MAG or Arsenal Gaming series really shows off that military theme, 
all while being very sleek and with overclocking capabilities. MSI has done a great job of not only decking out the board with all the latest components like quad USB 3.1 Gen 2, but also the looks of this board are amazing, earning a Techspin Platinum Award for a really excellent build. And I ended up buying one anyways because I liked it so much. We like the dual M.2 with the RAID possibility and the great looking cooler for that. And also the easy Wi-Fi upgrade option if you install Intel's CNVI Wi-Fi module. Dual Gigabit LAN is a top selling point with RGB headers and integration throughout the board. And overall, it's a great pick. I've done a bunch of research and have seen that most Z390 boards or boards supporting the Core i9 processor have VRMs that run pretty darn hot. And this board is no different, getting similarly hot at five gigahertz. If you run an AIO CPU cooler, you should definitely have a case fan blowing air over your VRMs. Actually a good recommendation for any AIO setup, but definitely more important when you're overclocking with an i9 processor. Though if you go a tier up to MSI's MEG Ace, that board features a 13 phase setup and can support higher overclocked CPUs running 100% for longer without thermal throttling. Me personally, I do a mild overclock and only hit 100% usage during renders, so this won't be an issue for me, and unless you're a top overclocker, no problem for you. For serious overclockers, under extreme stress testing with Prime95, AVX loads do spike thermos to the max, and the Tomahawk does start thermal throttling. For testing, I would recommend against changing the max TDP in BIOS to 115 degrees, just leave it at 100 degrees. This is just FYI though, as there is no common applications utilizing advanced vectorized extensions at present. Also, if you want to run dual AMD or RTX cards, the top PCIe slot is the only x16, and the other two are times 4 If you're a serious gamer, you're likely looking at tier up anyways, so for everyone else, this won't be an issue. In summary, MSI did a great job with this mid-tier motherboard with features that you want, like dual LAN and really slick I.O. shield, and also the dual M.2 Gen 3 slots. At $159 on Amazon, it's a cheap upgrade using Z390 and paired together with a 9th gen Intel CPU, you'll get a good board and save cash that you can use towards that new graphics card. Now I'd like to turn this over to you guys to hear your ideas, and if you pick one up, please let us know your thoughts and your experience with it in the comments. And don't forget to connect with us online, join us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all text spin review. What do you think of the overall design? What are you looking for at a new motherboard? And are you Intel or AMD or undecided? Please do hit that thumbs up button if you like this video or tell us how we can improve for next time. To see more videos like this, please do subscribe for new content and be sure to click that bell icon to get notified when we put up a new video. We check the comments and re we respond to most. So if you have a question or if we miss something, please tell us down below. And we always like to hear your ideas for upcoming episodes. Feel free to let us know what you'd like to see next. Thank you all very much for watching and see you again soon. Bye for now. All being very sleek and with overclock, overclocking, uh, overclocking capabilities. Uh, I need some coffee.